Happy New Year and welcome to LTV's Israel Daily. I'm Amit Harari and coming up in today's newscast, with the new Israeli government just being sworn in, it's quickly receiving a tough time at ICJ. Israeli pride, SpaceX successfully launching a new satellite into space and what's the Israeli connection? And a happy new year, skylines around the world lighting up by fireworks and bright lights as 2023 is officially here. United Nations General Assembly voted overwhelmingly to approve a resolution on Friday that would ask the International Court of Justice to take a stand on the legal status of the so-called Israeli occupation. Prime Minister Netanyahu and the Israeli ambassador to the UN condemned the one-sided move. ILTV Steve Leibovitch reports. The UN resolution passed by an overwhelming vote of 87 to 26, with 53 abstentions. All of Israel's Arab peace partners voted yes. The motion calls for an investigation that also covers Jerusalem and alleged discriminatory laws. We trust that regardless of your vote today, if you believe in international law and peace, you will uphold the opinion of the International Court of Justice when delivered and you will stand up to this Israeli government right now because freedom, justice, and peace shall prevail. Israeli Ambassador Gilad Erdan, who just had his term extended by Prime Minister Netanyahu, rejected the motion as completely one-sided. The outrageous resolution calling for the advisory opinion of the International Court of Justice is a moral stain on the UN and every country that supports it. No international body can decide that the Jewish people are occupiers in their own homeland. Any decision from a judicial body which receives its mandate from the morally bankrupt and politicized UN is completely illegitimate. The resolution calls for the Hague-based ICJ to render an urgent advisory opinion and an investigation of Israeli policy of prolonged occupation, settlement, annexation of Palestinian territory, and alterations of the status of Jerusalem. Israel, the U.S., the U.K., Australia, Austria, Canada, Germany, and Italy were among those voting against the resolution. Ukraine chose not to vote after Netanyahu reportedly spoke to Ukrainian President Zelensky. Prime Minister Netanyahu described the U.N. vote as being despicable. <laughs> שהתקבלו בעצרת הכללית של האו"ם במהלך השנים, כמה החלטה הבזויה שהתקבלה היום לא תחייב את ממשלת ישראל. העם היהודי אינו כובש בארצו ואינו כובש בבירתנו הנצחית ירושלים, ושום החלטה של האו"ם לא תעוות אמת היסטורית זו. The UN has a long history of anti-Israel resolutions, and both Israel and the U.S. have accused the world body of anti-Israel bias. In addition to its anti-Israel activities in the UN, the Palestinian Authority is calling for an international boycott of the new Israeli government. The Palestinian Prime Minister made the wild and irresponsible claim that his people need to be protected from the new Israeli government that possess an existential threat. <laughs> وأنا أعلم علم اليقين أن المجتمع الدولي لن يتعامل مع عناصر كثيرة من هذه الحكومة ولذلك بالنسبة لنا إحنا ضد كل الحكومات التي تمارس القتل والقمع والقاهر ضد أبناء شعبنا In Gaza, a Hamas terrorist ironically described Israeli ministers as being provocative من الواضح أن الحكومة برئاسة نتنياهو وعضوية سموتش بن كثير تشكل سياساتها أكثر من استفزاز هي عبث بسواء تفجير سواء محاولة تغيير الواقع في المسجد الأقصى المبارك أو السعار الاستيطان الذي بدأت بملامحه أو العدوان على الأسرة. This new United Nations vote will definitely not be making it easy for a newly sworn in government. And with me to analyze is founder and director of Palestinian Media Watch, Itamar Marcus. Hi, Itamar. Hello. How are you all today? 
We're okay, thank you. So the new government was just sworn in. A vote like this is certainly not the first thing they all like to deal with. What were the first reactions? Well, I think the Israeli government uh, is actually somewhat pleased, uh, honestly pleased by, by this vote. In, in the past, uh, if we go back a number of years, the votes against Israel, sometimes the Israel would have a handful of supporters. Uh, this time, uh, not only is it uh, stronger for Israel or, or less bad for Israel than it was in the previous vote, but uh, less than 50% voted in favor of this. So what's happening in recent years is that even though the numbers, even though it looks bad that we lost the vote, uh, we are gaining support. We're gaining support in Africa. Uh, most of the European Union countries uh, voted against this or abstained so that uh, bad on paper, but in fact, for the, if you're looking at trends, it's good for Israel. Very interesting. And the PA is working to send Israel to The Hague and calling for a boycott of the new government. The hostility of the Palestinian Authority has reached new levels, has it not? The Palestinian Authority, it's not a new level. The hostility is whatever they can get away with. Uh, if they can get away with terror, they will commit terror. When they, have, when they can't get away with terror, so they go to the international community. Uh, and that's what happened here with this vote and the vote to bring us to, uh, to the International Court of Justice. That's what the Palestinian Authority wants to do. They want to have Israel isolated. Uh, they've been trying to do this for years. They, they've sent many complaints, uh, previous complaints, uh, to, the, uh, to The Hague as well. Uh, so this is part of their regular strategy. I would call it a strategy of attrition. Keep chipping away at Israel, chipping away at Israel, try to uh, make us feel weak, try to make us feel isolated, try to make us feel pressured. And over the years, it sometimes works, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes Israel gives concessions, sometimes not. I think this government is going to be strong. And the outgoing government had a certain level of cooperation with the PA. How do you see relations with the new administration now? Well, city Authority condemned uh, the other government as well. Uh, when you say they had a certain amount of cooperation, the security cooperation that uh, that everyone's been talking about and the PA likes to talk about for so many years is not done for Israel's sake. The Palestinian Authority does security cooperation with Israel because if they wouldn't be doing it, Hamas would have taken over in Judea and Samaria, the West Bank, already the same way they took over in Gaza. Uh, Hamas... Um, has a tremendous amount of support uh, in, in, the, in the West Bank. Uh, in the polls, Hamas would have won had they actually had an election in the West Bank last year, as had been scheduled. Abbas knows this. Uh, Hamas is interested and anxious to take over and rule the entire Palestinian Authority. The security cooperation, it's a myth that the Palestinian Authority is doing this for Israel. They're doing it for themselves. They notify Israel about Hamas terrorists. Israel arrests the Hamas terrorists, and everyone is happy. Itamar, even when there are sharp differences between Israel and the PA, there's still security cooperation on, on some levels. Is that in danger in any way right now? No, as I say, uh, it's, it's not in danger because the Palestinian Authority needs it. Uh, if, I t if, I, if I could have... Uh, a dollar or even a shekel for every time the Palestinian Authority has announced that it's canceling the security cooperation, I'd be a very rich person today. Uh, it, it's a constant message. We've been hearing it for years. Uh, Abbas has said that he's going to give away the keys and let Israel run the Palestinian Authority. He, he has threats every day. He has another threat uh, to Israel. Uh, in fact, he wants to continue ruling. In fact, he wants to survive. He wants his government to survive. So uh, the status quo is very, very good for Mahmoud Abbas. And how is actually the Palestinian media covering all this? I mean, what are the, what are the voices there? The Palestinian, uh, the Palestinian Authority is trying to turn this into a major, major victory uh, internally. Internally, Now, I say internally because, uh, as I mentioned, in, in all the recent polls, Hamas is, is, ahead of, uh, is ahead of Fatah, Mahmoud Abbas's party. Mahmoud Abbas is way behind the Hamas leaders uh, when it comes to the polls for presidential elections. So but the, the PA is trying to exaggerate the importance of this to its own people. Oh, this is a tremendous success. Look what we've done. We're isolating Israel. We're going to bring them to The Hague. Uh, it's all it's all talk uh, of the PA trying to convince their people that they have a leadership that's accomplishing things for them. But in fact, like I say, it's uh, it's really uh, it's not going to make any difference in the long run. Itamar Marcus, thank you so much for joining us.
You're very welcome.